Have you ever brewed a beer with 100% wheat malt in it? Well, I hadn't, but it was one of those things I always wanted to try out. But yeah, there of course must be a reason why normal wheat beers only contains like 40 up to 60% of wheat malt and the rest is normal barley. But yeah, there's only one way to find out. And yeah, I guess uh, I'm taking one for the team again. I'm Dr. Hans, this is Dr. Hans Brewery, my channel about beer and home brewing. I do this stupid experiment so you don't have to, so please consider becoming a subscriber, hit that bell icon so you get notified when I put up another stupid experiment, and of course, like the video. And also, if you find this interesting, consider supporting on Patreon or channel membership. Oh, just buy me a beer, all links down below. This is a green glass video, so we're gonna see the brew footage and then come back and taste the beer. We're also going to talk about why I decided to call this an all wheat IPA and not a white IPA. What is the difference? And also we need to address the American wheat in this one also. Big shout out to today's sponsor, Brew Gold. With all that said, let's get naked, uh, let's get brewing. Okay, five kilos of wheat and that actually fit. Five kilos of of barley won't fit. So <sighs> wheat weighs more than barley by volume. Weight by volume. Okay, let's get this crushed. I never crushed just wheat before. Hopefully we, we will be fine. Okay, so everything is crushed, but what you, should we double crush it just to <laughs> just to ask for more problems? Let's 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 double crush it. I could have changed the the mill settings, but. I don't want to do that. The worst thing that could happen here today is that we end up with a, where it's sessionable beer and I have no problem with that at all. I think I counted for like 70% efficiency. That's a little lower than my normal wheat beers, but this is 100% wheat, so maybe we will go down really low today. Okay, so this is how it looks now. Everything is open, but yeah, to me it looks a little coarse, maybe. Rice holes is a must. Maybe we need to add more water also, because I'm going to use a lot of rice holes today. Either you could use rice holes, oats holes, uh, or you could do like brew in a bag, maybe. Smells nice. I'm gonna give this a really good stir, adding a lot of rice holes to this. I could have mixed it in with the grains. Why didn't I do that? I don't know. And why the rice holes? Well, this is 100% wheat. Wheat is super sticky. Doesn't have like the holes that you have on 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 barley. If you're using if you're brewing a barley beer, you won't need rye sauce, but if you have something really sticky in there, a lot of wheat or rye or oats, could really help out by adding rye sauce or oat sauce. Wheat beers are normally used with like 40 to 60% wheat and the rest is barley. But no one remembers a coward. And as usual, I do this crazy experiment so you don't have to. So at least like this video <laughs> if you haven't already subscribed. You want to look at some mash porn? Of course you do. 
Big shout out to today's sponsor, Brogoat. Brogoat is a Swedish homebrew supplier with a physical store here in Stockholm, Sweden, but they ship like everywhere in Europe. So go down and check them out. First link in the description. Thank you so much. Brogoat, back to the doctor. Uh, my pump is broken, so we'll be manually circulating this. I will mash this for an hour at 66 Celsius. Then we'll do a, a mash out. I added a lot of rice also, really. If we need more, we'll add more, but I don't know. Trying to take the temp up to 76-ish for a mash out to get as most sugars out as possible so far so good no stuck mash everything is manual everything is manual now on this system but soon the new system will arrive it's starting to go slower and circulating so i will I won't stick this to the bottom, I will just try to see if I could loosen this up underneath here to see if this works and hopefully I don't have to stir everything up so we still have like a filter effect there but yeah if the guys can brew beer I think this is working. How deep? How deep is your? Look, we're not. We're not down. Maybe halfway. See, we didn't stir up everything. Still nice and clean looking. What? Epic YouTube content. This is gonna go very, very slowly now. But. I was asking for trouble when doing 100% wheat. Better. I had to stir it up a little. I don't like the, the splashing. I had to give this a good stir, but now we're like, you can see, super cloudy here again. But I was begging for it with a 100% wheat. I should have added even more rice holes, but I could have add more now, but I don't want to like scrape the bottom, but maybe we will have to come to that also. So this is going super slow. So here goes nothing. I will scrape the bottom and we will have a... Can you hear that? We will have an extremely cloudy wort. But I'm thinking if you're doing like brew in a bag, it would be the same. I will start sparching now. Whoops. Feeding the deers. Adding some calcium sulfate today to like try to pronounce some sort of hops in this. But look at the the murky the murky mess I made. Why am I doing this thing? Yes, so you don't have to. Of course. Okay, let's start the the boil. I've lowered the temperature down. So I would just have a more of a simmer than a rolling boil. See the set and timer for 60 minutes. Okay, timer is still when timer. Thank you. One hour boil. No hops until hop stand. Flame out. We'll shield this beer down to uh, 80 Celsius. Let's turn on the the water here. 
This is this is not good content, doctor. You're running around in the forest, turning on water and shit. And I would just try to get it down to 80. I will stir it. Just so it moves over the, the coil. In here I have 80 grams Simcoe. No, I have not. In here I have 50 grams of Simcoe, 50 grams of Amarillo and 50 grams of something else. It's Chinook. So not really going for a New England style, going for more of an IPA. Now it is at 78. It is what it is. In goes. You want to see it? Don't need the cable now. I will do a 30 minute hop stand at whatever temperature it is. The hops are in. I've added some yeast nutrient. Was like 10 minutes left. That's all I've added so far. I will give this a really good whirlpool now. And I might come back a few times during the hop stand and stirring things up just to have the hops moving. And then in the end we can give a nice finishing whirlpool to try to collect as much as possible. But as you see, this wort is murky as hell because of me giving up on the sparge. But don't give up now. It will be beer over my dead body. Now we're starting to get the smell hot. Why am I screaming? It's down to like 26 Celsius and uh, doesn't seem to want to get down any further than, than that really. This has been sanitized. Just gonna pour the excess star sand out. And I've boiled this hose and sanitized it just to be like super anal about everything. This should work. We don't want like the, the bottom debris anyways today. Yep. Ooh, it's so murky. But yeah, we were expecting that. But it's super, super murky. Should we try to like splash this somehow? We hit... Yeah. I don't have any oxygen. I can't buy oxygen. It's out. I think it uh, has to do with the, the current situation. I will splash it really good. Just pointing the hose against the hose, or you could point it at the the uh, plancher rod, the middle rod here. I want to add the yeast, but I can't let this go. Uh, don't wait to add your yeast. Add your yeast as quickly as possible. So I really want to add some oxygen to give the yeast a, a better start. But at least I have add some yeast nutrient to like spoil my yeast. Yeast makes beer, brewers makes wort, so I will try to really spoil my yeast. And uh, one way I spoil it is that when I ferment under pressure, I ferment hot, and the yeast loves the heat. Doesn't doesn't produce those like fusel alcohols and other nastiness. How much are we getting? It is super, super murky, but yeah, we were expecting that. It will drop down. This will be beer and we, we will probably be good. Maybe there is a reason why the Germans don't do 100% wheat beer. Hmm. Yeah, well, I knew that already, but I want to do it just once at least. I do like the fact that 
you can attach the the ball there to to the middle rod to the plancher. I will start this at like 15 psi. This will be dry hopped, and then after dry hopping, I will bump up the uh, oh, that's murky wort. I will bump up the pressure to get the carbonation level I want. I stopped putting so much pressure on my beers that I will dry hop. If I'm not going to dry hop it, I can just push the amount of pressure I want straight away, but I need to open this. I won't be dry hopping from the bottom because I think it's it's not a good idea. I will be dry hopping from the top. Okay, call it there. It's just just murky. Just the murky stuff now. And I will actually put some some lube on this just to be just to be sure it won't hurt anything. I know I don't have to store some of that, but yeah, you know how it is. Okay, on. Uh, let's put some pressure on here. So I'm gonna start this at 15 psi, and I will. There's no real need to put pressure on it now, but because I will put some more pressure on it down the shed when I attach this bandit. I did not add the yeast. Oh, small hiccup. Small hiccup. Thank God. Uh, yes, I'm cheating today, but it's getting very late and done live brew day over at Patreon. I kegged two beers and brewed, so yeah, I'm, I'm actually just beat, so. Should we just use one today? Because there is a low, low gravity wart. We should be. It should be fine, and I'm going to ferment it hot. <clears throat> okay, now we also have yeast, and now it's technically alcohol-free beer. I'm going to carry this down to the brew shed, and we'll put the spandit on it. My temperature probe ain't long enough, so I, I can't use the, the probe hole there. Uh, if I don't drill a new hole, I can do that. Not today. Not today. You can try that another time. So let's put some gas on here now. So we can get the, the spandit on. And I will just tape the, the probe to the to the side there. And I put gas on it just to be able to... Can you see anything? So I put, put gas on it. I said that I want to start this at 15 psi. So let's do that. So I will just open this bandit. If you're releasing too fast, this can fly off. So then it's better to... Release a lot, and then put the thermometer back on, and do the fine tuning that way. Well, this will fly off, promise you. So, 15 psi. Then we just close it. We got about 15 psi, and I will tape the probe here and put an insulator on there. Brood is done! Now, oh, some cleaning to do, but yeah. 
that's about it. And tomorrow we can read the fermentation here. Going crazy. Maybe I can film it. No promises. Two days into fermentation, just wanted to show you. Uh, sitting at 25 degrees Celsius. You can see the thermometer bubbling away, holding about 15 psi there. Steady. Small Krausen. Fermentation going like crazy. But don't know if you can see this, how much debris it is. Like here, we starting to have debris all the, the way down. So, it's a slant here. We're gonna be fine, but th there's a lot of debris here. This was a really bad idea, as usual. Small Krausen hold back by the, the pressure. Next step is to dry hop when the fermentation are slowing down. If you have a big Krausen, you could read from the, the Krausen when the Krausen is falling, but as we're doing on the pressure, small Krausen, it's much more easier to read the activity in the thermometer. So when the bubbling starting to slow down, or you can see the Krausen is falling, then I would dry hop. So I want to dry hop before the end of fermentation. Day three, three days after pitch. Now we can see still some Krausen, but you can see in the thermometer here that fermentation is, has slowed down rapidly. Still at 15 psi. So it's time to dry hop. So I'm gonna do it like this. I will pull off the, the spandit. And we will re release the pressure. Oh, smells awesome! And we will see some bubbling here. This will, of course, stir up everything. Not a massive reaction, but you can see there's bubbling here. Here we have some hops, Simcoe, Amarillo and Chinook, 50 gram each. Awesome. Let's open this up. We'll need both hands. Actually, loosen it with just both hands. And the pressure will help pop the lid up. And in goes the hops. Uh, I can't film it. Maybe in a, in a really bad angle we could do this. Don't be afraid to dry hop from the top, guys. Because the beer is now off gassing. Okay, we're closed. The okay, the hops are in. You can see them. I will now start to raise up the temperature and also the pressure to get the carbonation I want. So I'm gonna raise this up little by little. Set. I can be more aggressive tomorrow. Let's start with a, just one degree now. And put some pressure on here, really. Are we sitting at just over 25 psi now? I want more, but I'm gonna let the fermentation raise it up. So, but I will just know where I am. Okay, there. We'll close it a bit, something like that. And I can come back and close this up. I could put, put some more pressure on here also right now, but yeah, don't really need to. Okay, dry hopping done. Okay, here we have her. It's super hot today. In Swedish measurement, I know, but it's like 30 degrees Celsius. It's got to be hot where you live also. And yeah, the doctor can translate that into Fahrenheit or convert it or something, maybe. So, what do we got here? We have a one finger white head, a tree in the uh, head. Uh, yeah, 
have to find some where like half shady at least so I can record this. Super hazy, of course, with all that wheat, just wheat in it. And uh, yellowish color. Nice. Yeah, uh, grapefruit. Like, lemon, most like grapefruit, lemon, like zesty. Smells really nice. Yeah, that that's like dominant. It doesn't like no no like maltiness. Like a lemon ice cream. I don't know why I said ice cream. Sorry. But yeah. Cheers. Let's dive in. Yeah, super refreshing. They, they get screaming like wheat and uh, yeah, really good mouthfeel. This only, what did it end at? Like 4.2%. Good mouthfeel, fruitiness from, from those hops, really clean fermented beer. Mm, I got a little bit overexcited there, sorry. Nice level of carbonation really has, fills up the, the, the mouth with all of those flavors. When I experimented with uh, doing brews for my Session New England IPA kit, which is available at today's sponsor, Brew Goat Bar, uh, I did add a lot of wheat malt in it and I found like it's really good to add a lot of wheat malt in like sessionable beers. So I have been playing a little bit with uh, this idea of a wheat IPA. I'm gonna run through the recipe. White IPA is, in, just in, in my book at least, wheat IPA ain't a, a beer style. So it's, it's, it's of course open for interpretation. White IPA is like a where hopped wheat. So you should have a little bit of like esters there from, from the yeast. This would be more like an like an American wheat, a hoppy American wheat, because uh, it's a clean yeast. I used the uh, USO5, I have it in the uh, recipe. And recipe is already up, by the way, in the big Dr. Hans recipe book for the patrons to dig into in written form and yeah, all recipe goes up in written form and beer XMLs. Yeah, cool. So, an, an American wheat would be like more like maybe 40% wheat and it could be a little hop forward, but not as hop forward as, as this one because I really wanted that like more of an old school with a little bite to it and uh, not going into the New England like tropical fruit. I wanted just a wheat IPA and uh, this is my best interpretation of this style. But you don't have to use of course all wheat in, in the wheat IPA because I've been experimenting with it also. You can do like a normal Hefeweizen recipe but instead of doing like a wheat, sorry, wheat bread yeast use a clean fermenting yeast and and hop it and you can play with the hops but I wouldn't push it like into the uh, hops you, you would use in uh, New England and I would instead make it a little bit more bitter so you can get an IPA and not just another hazy napa. Okay this was like a 23 liter batch size. Don't know exactly how much I got in there but that was the calculation. I 
ended up with an efficiency of yeah 62 percent that's super low but that was sticky as whew. so all wheat five kilos of wheat malt to 28 liters after sparching and boil it for an hour no hops in the the boil hop stand at 80 somewhere around there i think it was like 78 degrees celsius i used 50 grams of amarillo 50 grams of chinook 50 grams of simcoe and on day three the uh, the krausen has fallen and the fermentation kicked off so i dry hop this with 50 grams of uh, amarillo 50 grams of chinook and 50 grams of Simcoe and this was fermented with USO5 yeah and uh, at 25 celsius started at like 15 psi and ended at 35 psi or 2.4 bars at 30 celsius cold crashed and kegged and now we're drinking it Will I do this again? I uh, don't think so. But wheat IPA, yes, but not 100% wheat. There is a reason the beer turned out awesome, but that brew day was a nightmare. And that the way it looked in that fermenter, <laughs> come on. But you could do like 60% wheat and 40% barley take 60% wheat, 40% pilsner or change out like 5% of the, the pilsner for maybe, depends on what you want, but maybe uh, Munich malt or Vienna malt or some like Karahel, it depends, play with it, there you have a, like, a, like a base recipe. 4.2% ABV, yeah, sessionable beer, really nice in this hot summer day. So if you haven't already, consider becoming a subscriber. Do hit that little bell to get a notification when I put out a new video. And of course, smash that like button. Big shout out to my patrons and channel members for all of your support. See you guys behind the scene. Thank you all for watching. Dr. Hans out.